It is Church of Terrell, Texas. We are about to get started. Thank you for watching at home. We pray that you are having a glorious Easter morning. We want you to be part of our worship experience today, and we are thankful for you. He is risen. He is risen indeed.
We're doing some up-downs today. Happy Easter, y'all. Please join us in our first hymn, number 302, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Please stand, y'all. the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. is the day that the Lord has made. Let us give thanks and be Amen. There are so many of you all here who I haven't seen in a while, but I'm glad to see some, some relatives too from out of town. I want to give everybody a big hug, so I just would like to do that right now, but I would say, come outside afterward. Let's do some pictures by the flowers, and it's so meaningful to see each one of you here today. Thank you. If I don't know you yet, I'd like to get to know you. It's, it's a real blessing to have you here celebrating this Resurrection Sunday with our church family. And uh, it is just a great joy to see. And I'm seeing my granddaughters walk in right now. So delighted to see them. Hello, Alice. And I, hey, Stacy. She's like, okay. <laughs> What's Grandpa doing wearing that, that robe thing? So <laughs> anyway, it's great to see. I want to have um, Alice's grandmother now, my wife, Daria, give a few announcements that we have. No, just first, first announcement is, um, if any of y'all need it, we do have a nursery available today. Um, just go right, you can just go right up the stairs and to the left. So anybody, anybody that has young ones uh, is welcome to go up there, and um, you can go right, you know, right now if you want, or you can go later on. We have a nursery worker up there to be happy to see, see the little ones. So um, anyhow, 
Christ our Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. The cross out front is covered with beautiful flowers from uh, y'all's gardens. And we thank you very much for bringing them. You can feel free to go out there and just take lots of pictures with your loved ones uh, after the service. And um, you can feel free to share these on our church Facebook page. And then you can email them to the church office. So we'd lo love to have you do that. Um, celebrating Christ's resurrection today is just a reminder of the joy we are anticipating of walking in the footsteps of Jesus next year as our church family and community heads to the Holy Land. We're going to be um, taking a trip there. Um, if y'all y'all can start planning now for the trip, which is going to be May 14th through the 23rd in 2024. We will meet at 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 18th, that's a week from this Tuesday, in Fellowship Hall for light refreshments and uh, a meeting and to share more information and learn more. Invite your friends and family and anybody that you might want to invite and um, for um, to come to this meeting, and this is a like a once-in-a-lifetime type experience. We're so glad to have you here today. Please register your attendance online. You can share anything that you would like to let us know about, prayer concerns, or any questions that you might have. Just go to fumctarrell.org and scroll down on the left-hand side. We want to thank you for your financial support for the ministries of our church. There are three ways you can give. You can place your gifts in the wooden boxes that we have. They're at the back and at the side over here. Or you can drop off or mail your checks to 503 West College Street, Terrell, Texas. Or you can go online to our website, and that's 503, I mean, uh, go online to our website, uh, fumcterrell.org, and you just click on the big red button there. Also, um, we have, to my left, we have an offering plate, and that's for Ukraine, if any of y'all would like to donate um, some um, funds to Ukraine, I'm sure that they would greatly appreciate that. The church office is going to be closed tomorrow for Easter Monday. Now as we prepare for an important announcement from our staff parish, parish relations committee chair, Ann McDonald, hear these words from the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, on the work of ministry. Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God, and I care not whether they be clergymen or laymen. They alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven upon earth. So, Ann McDonald, do you want to come forward? Good morning. I'm Ann McDonald, chairman of the Staff Parish Committee, and I have a long awaited announcement. Our new minister at First United Methodist Church, Terrell, is Reverend Jerry Jones <laughs> and his wife, Jerry Beth Jones. Jerry was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but moved with his family to Louisville, Texas in 1973, where he grew up and graduated from Louisville High School in 1986. He received his Bachelor of Science degree with a major in psychology and a minor in uh, sociology, I'm sorry, and a minor in psychology from East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma, as well as a Master's of Divinity from Southern Methodist University in Dallas. He has been in ministry 36 years and has served as a pastor for churches in Flower Mound, Sherman, Wichita Falls, Sulphur Springs, Nakona, Gainesville, Van Austin, and now Terrell. Jerry met Jerry Beth at East Central University, where she received a Bachelor of Science in Services to the Death with a minor in interpretation, interpreting, I'm sorry. While serving in Wichita Falls, Jerry Beth went back to school and received her nursing degree and is a licensed vocational nurse. She has been a nurse for 19 years and has served in hospitals, <clears throat> a VA clinic, as a school nurse, pediatric home health, and is now in her seventh year as an oncology nurse at Texas Oncology in Denton, Texas. Jerry and Jerry Beth enjoy camping, traveling, and being outdoors. 
Jerry is an avid sports fan with a love for most all sports, but has a very special passion for OU football, OU softball, and softball for all ages. He's been an he has announced the softball games in Van Alstine for the last two years for the girls. They have been married for 33 years and are blessed with three amazing children, Brandon, 31, Autumn, 22, and Lexi, 21, as well as a wonderful daughter-in-law, Leslie, and son-in-law, Shelby. But their pride and joy are their six grandchildren, Serena, nine, Brindley, five, Jaxlyn, three, Paisley, two, Killian, one, and SJ, six months. Our new minister is Reverend Jerry Jones. Please. <laughs> Please put two dates on your calendar. The first date is June the 11th, where we will celebrate Pastor Pete and Daria and the life, the, the, what they have meant to us for the last six years here in the Terrell Church. And then on June the, I mean, excuse me, July 2nd, we will have a brunch to welcome Reverend Jerry Jones and his wife, Jerry Lee Jones. Thank you. I invite you all to stand and join our next hymn this morning, number 314, In the Garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear calling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet The birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Please be seated. All right. Well, it is my great pleasure, first of all, to share with you that I am so excited for this congregation 
and getting to know Jerry Jones and his wife, Jerry Beth Jones. And uh, that's easy to remember, right? Jerry and Jerry Beth, you got to got that. But Jerry, Jerry's been a, a minister serving Van Alstine for several years. He's been in this North Texas conference doing some amazing work. He's very familiar with what I would call town and country type churches. So he's very familiar with, he's going to fit right in, I think, really well in Terrell and be a great blessing to you all. So we got a few UT fans. You're going to have to adjust just a little bit, okay? But, but we'll be good. It'll work out that part. But, but we've got, we've got some, some OU blood coming in. He'll, he'll connect with our First Christian Church down the street where Craig's a, Craig Rutherford is a, is a big, uh, big Sooners fan. But that'll work out. But he's going to be great. They're going to move into the parsonage. It'll be a wonderful opportunity to get to know his family and his, his, uh, their grandchildren. So that'll be special. Speaking of children, we've got a special baptism to do, and as the family's coming forward, I'd like to invite all of our children. One thing about baptisms is the children don't get to see the babies. I'm going to invite all the children, if you're, or, or your parents can come too, to fill in these first couple of pews just real quick for the baptism. You know, if you guys want to come down, the Naharas, or if you want to come down, others that are, that are here, bring, y'all can come down and see. And then Erica and Alex, if you guys could bring Zayden down along with your, your family members. And Daria, could you assist me? You guys can sit right there on the front, so our, our first couple of rows, and be able to experience this. Daria, why don't you get in over there? So good to see you all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into God, Christ's holy church. And it's my great joy to have met with Alex, and with Erica, and with Zayden, who's looking at you all out in the audience really well. And he's, uh, we've, had a, we've had an opportunity to, uh, to, to visit. And Zayden, you and I have been here at this sanctuary, haven't we? We've talked, we've done all kinds of things. There's a picture of us up on the screen. Do you see that? That's us playing in my office, right? So we've been there, and it's good to be here with your sisters also, and your family, your grandparents. Oh, what a joy to be here, isn't it, Zayden? So this, this, we talked about with your parents what baptism is. And the baptism, it's really an outward sign of an inward grace, the grace of Jesus Christ that's taking place in our lives right now. And it's, it's a, a sign for infant baptism that what you're doing is being initiated into the life of the church. And you're also, we're, we're recognizing that we come into this world as your children, and we are receiving that grace that's there. And it's, it, that's a cool outfit you have on, too. I bet you that's got a story on that. Is that Zachary, was Zachary, was Zachary was baptized. Your, your big brother. So the deal is, uh, we come into this time where your parents and your congregation are saying that we will raise you in the ways that lead to life and life eternal. And when you're old enough, Zayden, like probably about 12 or so, you go through something called confirmation. That's something that your big sisters will be going through pretty soon. And the deal is that's where you become, take the vows of membership on your own and become a full member of the United Methodist Church. And what we are doing, though, with an infant is we are saying that we want to receive that grace of God, that grace that's always with us. We want to receive that now. So that's what we're doing by, by, by receiving the, the waters of baptism. So as we continue, it says, we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And so... I want to present for baptism that this child's name shall be given as Zayden Anthony. Anthony Price, presented for baptism. And so on behalf of the whole church, I'm going to ask you, the parents, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? And your answer is, I do. Okay, it's like a wedding. Okay, just kind of keep doing this. Keep going. Do, do you accept? It is a vow, just like a wedding. Do, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they represent themselves? So I do. I do. Very. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the Church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. And will you nurture Zayden? in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided 
to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? I say, I will. I will. I will. Okay. And then do you, as, and now I'm going to ask a question to you all, because this is your part. I don't want to leave you out. It's very important that you hear this. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And your answer is, we do. A little louder, please. Thank you, we do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Zayden now before you in your care? And you say, we will. Yeah. Amen. So let us join together in professing the, uh, uh, the Christian faith. Do you believe in God the Father? You all say that. I believe in God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit. All right, so I want to speak over this water that we have here. If, um, let's see if you can hold that for me. The waters of baptism, water's been a symbol for generations, for thousands of years. Water's been a symbol, the waters that, that were the, the waters of uh, in the Old Testament, in the time of the flood that cleansed the earth, in the time of Jesus' baptism that signified who he was. We are born of water and the Spirit. So, Zayden, Anthony, Price, may I hold you? Okay, okay, you take your hat back, pull his hat back a little bit. There you go. So good to see you. Yes, you are doing great. You can say hi to these people. This is your church family. So, Zayden, uh, Anthony, Price, I baptize you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you and confirm you in all the ways. Let's go see your church family. Let's go see these people. See these children right here? They're children right here. They love you and everything. That's, yeah, that's Ezra and Jeanette. And you see these folks over here? This is the choir. They sing so lovely. I'm going to be sure and see the choir and see Miss Aaron over here on the piano and Jim. See Taylor. He's got great experience with the nephew. He's got really good. You got to see the hunts back here. You got to be sure and see them and everything. Yes, Miss Joan Hunt. She's got lots of kids. She knows about grandkids too and everything. And that's Carl and see all these folks back here. These folks love you. They, they just get to meet you, but they're, they're going to love you and it'll be a great family. Let's go see these ones over here. You see these folks back here? Yeah, yeah, this is Zayden. He is the best baby. <laughs> I mean, just amazing. He's putting up. <laughs> wow, look at this family of yours. Your sisters, and you see all these folks? Wow, this is nurse practitioner Judy. She'll take good care of you. And Becky, <laughs> they know how to take good care of you and everything like that. What a blessing. Sandy, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, and you see John and Randy back there. What a great blessing to see this. And there's your grandpa, and there's your grandparents. Yeah, yeah. This is the pulpit. This is where I keep all the firepower back here, okay? <laughs> you just got to watch. I mean, lots of firepower back there. A fire extinguisher, too. So we got that. All right. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this child, Zayden. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his smile. Thank you for his example. Thank you for the, being the perfect baby that you put together, this amazing child, this miracle and Lord, I just ask that you anoint this time, anoint his family. We would celebrate today, this Resurrection Sunday, the arrival into the kingdom, into the church family of Zayden Anthony Price. It's in your name I pray. God bless you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y'all are great. I want, to, I want to get some witnesses to sign this. This is your certificate that we have here. In fact, I was going to have maybe Daria help with that or something like that. If you, could help, if you guys could help sign that. And then, uh, let's see if we give thanks for all that. And then, and then the last thing I would say is the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Yes, you want this, don't you? Okay, Derry, if you could help them get that, the signatures on the witnesses, and y'all could do that back over there, but let's give them a, a welcome to this community. Y'all want to get some pictures afterwards? Y'all could come up here for pictures. We could do that. So. Oh, and this goes with uh, Alex.
Alex, Alex, this cross. This is from the Holy Land. This is for you guys. This is this is just this is for him. So. We can go home now. This is great. <laughs> this is wonderful. No, we, we're not going to go home. We, we, we got more to do. We got some good things. Darius is going to read now our Psalm, Psalm 118. Psalm 118, 1 through 2 and 14. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. The word of God for the people of God. It's now time for our pastoral prayer. I want to say that if you have any prayer concerns, you can always write them down on a blue card. That are, those are available at the entrances. Or you could email me or text me. I'd be glad to put things on the prayer list if you'd like to include those things that, that need to be shared. And I want you to turn to the back of your bulletin as well. And we have prayer concerns, especially lifting up our dear friend Deidria Davis, who would be right here in the middle of the choir. But she's been dealing with, uh, she's been dealing with uh, her, her chemo treatments and things. And we want to pray for Deidria and continue to watch over her. Uh, other, other prayer concerns that you see there uh, that are listed there, including uh, family and friends of Mike Hargrove on his passing and also of, of Linda Butler, who passed away March 30th. Also, please be continuing to pray for my brother, John, who has um, uh, suffered a heart attack, and he's dealing with a number of health issues right now. Ray, we're praying for you, and Tom Snow, we're delighted that you're back and healed up from pneumonia, but we got you in the bulletin. So yes, he's got that sign. <laughs> let's, let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day, this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you that the tomb is empty, that you are risen, you are risen indeed. Lord, we thank you that we join together as brothers and sisters in Christ, and today adding another, another member of your church family, recognizing that grace that comes before us. We thank you for that. And we ask you also to watch over this community that we are part of. Be with the children, all the children in our schools, in our community, and be a, be a strength for them and their families, especially today. May this be a day that we talk around the table, Lord, about what it means to believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. And to that end, Lord, may we, may we join in the prayer that you taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would stand and affirm your faith with the affirmation of faith that we'll have it on the screens. It's also on page 881 of your, of your hymnals. Together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen please be seated
God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died. My Savior lives. Oh.
wonderful choir. Thank you so much. He lives. What a joy. Let's hear the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 28. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What a joy it is today to see so many of you here, so many of the children too, it's, it's a real joy to see my, my two grandchildren who are in the nursery right now, Alice and Stacy, and they are uh, just a, a great joy. We celebrated Stacy's birthday yesterday, her one-year-old birthday, which was, was awesome. And Alice is, is two and a half, almost three, and we are learning a lot of words. And one of the words that we're learning a lot is the personal pronoun, my. Right? <laughs> the parents would agree, right? We know a lot of things that are mine. My goldfish, my dolly, my car. And one of her favorites is my baby sister. She really says that one a lot. My baby sister and everything. So things that are my, she really takes ownership of those things that belong to me, that are mine. So when, she was, when the baby was getting her six-month shots, she was at the pediatrician's office. You know, the, of course, the first shot, the baby just screamed, you know, and that Alice, before the second shot came and pointed her finger in the face of that pediatrician and says, my baby, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> in other words, I'm going to protect them. The, the, the mama bear or the mama big sister is already being developed. And you see that, my baby, my baby. I wonder if we could take ownership of things like that. We hear in the psalmist today, Psalm 118. The dairy I read that says, My Lord has become my strength and my song and my salvation. If we could say that this Lord is mine, my strength, my song, my salvation, what a difference it would make in how we see our faith. So, there's a question at Passover, which is celebrated, and Jesus was celebrating Passover really at the Last Supper. There's a question that the youngest child poses to the older folks. And the question for Passover on that Thursday night would have been for us is, what makes tonight more special than the rest? And the youngest child is the one that asks that question. What makes tonight more special than the rest? And the elders, the people, of the fa- older people of the family are then to go in to explain the deliverance of the Hebrew people from bondage in Egypt, their deliverance from their, their backs up against the, the Red Sea and how God parted the waters, their deliverance of that night when there was the Passover, when with, their, with the blood of a lamb on their, their doorposts, the angel of death passed over those homes that had that mark. There was this symbol of telling a story, telling a story. I wonder if we who profess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord would likewise at our dinner tables today for Easter, before we race out and do Easter egg hunts or talk about what we're going to eat, what if, what if we paused and had the youngest child in our family circle say, what makes 
this Easter Sunday more special than all the other Sundays? What kind of answer would you be able to give to the, that child's question? I hope you would be able to share that this is when we celebrate Jesus Christ's victory over sin and death. But that's a good Sunday school answer, and it's a good church answer, and I hope you could give that. But I hope all the more you could say or tell a story or share a story about this Jesus as my Jesus, as my Savior, as my strength, as my song, as my salvation. In other words, I'm asking you, could you share a story of how Jesus has delivered you from sin and death? And Jesus is continuing to be a saving force in your life because I believe you have a unique story, a unique story that needs to be shared. So I, I was reading the scripture of Matthew and I was reflecting on it and that today at the seven o'clock sunrise service, we shared that each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each had slightly different variations on the story of that Easter morning when they arrived. And usually they all show women are the ones who arrive first, and, and they're the first ones to be able to say, to notice that he is risen and, and know that, that, that Christ is gone, is gone is, 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 has been is raised from the dead. Each one had different variances. And the Matthew version, the way it reads... It says, Mary Magdalene, we know who that is, and the other Mary. Really? The other Mary? I mean, which one? There's so many Marys in the Bible. We've got more Marys in the New Testament. My goodness, there's Marys everywhere. So which Mary is this? It's just the other Mary. Now, some of the other Gospels will say things like Mary, the mother of James. So we know that. Or they'll clarify who, who we're talking about, which Mary. But this Mary was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. We don't know which one it is. I don't want to be the other person, but, but you know, let me just ask, do we have any Marys in this room? Anybody named Mary? Anybody? No, no Marys. Okay, good. Okay, oh, oh, we got what? We got one? Your first name? Oh, very good. We got one Mary. Okay, good. How about, do we have any Cathy's here? Any Cathy's? We got one Cathy. Okay, just one Cathy. Okay, I, I came from a church, Wheatland, that had like five Cathy's. I mean, all, I'm glad to have you, Cathy. Do we have anybody named Anne here by chance? There's any Anne's? We got, we got one we got two. Any other ants over here? We've got three. Okay, okay. We got, we've got a lot of ants. Some ants are not here today. We've got a lot of ants. So, you know, I want to know that you have a name. It's more than just the other ant. You know, you're, you have a name for who you are. So I'm going to Sulphur Springs, you might have heard, to be the pastor there. And it turns out that just a few short years ago, they had a very well-loved pastor who served and did so many amazing things. And his name was... Pastor Pete. <laughs> that was his name, Pastor Pete. He went by had a different last name, Pastor Pete. Well, I don't mind going there and being, you know, the younger Pastor Pete, or maybe the <laughs> red-headed Pastor Pete, you know, or the left-handed Pastor Pete. I don't, I don't know what they'll say. I just don't want to go there and be known as the other Pastor Pete. <laughs> And I guess part of the reason I don't want to be known as the other Pastor Pete is because I think that sounds so anonymous. And I believe Jesus has a unique story to share with each one of you. I believe Jesus enters your life and it changes you in a unique way that's unlike any other Mary or Anne or Kathy or Pete. There's a unique way that Jesus changes you. It's like the angel saying, come and see. Come and see this Jesus and see how Jesus is going or already changing you. So you may have heard, some of you who've been here for several weeks or others may have heard earlier this year, we were awarded a grant from SMU Perkins School of Theology. It was a program called Testimony HQ. And the whole idea was helping us to be able to share our story. Because I believe you have a unique story. And so we had a, a, a class together with, with a large group, a lunch we had from our church. And our church, you, 
drafted this statement that I'll read to you. And it took about seven minutes to put it together because you guys were saying, what is testimony? What does it mean? You said, testimony is sharing by talking to people about your faith in God through your personal journey. I'll read that again. Testimony is sharing or talking to people about your faith in God through your personal journey. Somehow, that's gone away. People stop willingly talking for whatever reason about their personal journey, how Jesus has entered their life and making a difference. Well, my desire in the limited time I have left in this congregation is to normalize talking about Jesus, to normalize it where you can talk about your faith in God and how God's making an impact in your life. And not just back when you were 12 years old and went through confirmation class, not just when he saved you from some harrowing health scare that you had you know, many years ago, but how God is working with your life this very week. For you to be able to share that testimony is, is, is my heart's desire because I believe you are a unique child of God with a unique testimony. And there's someone who needs to hear it. You see, we, we have something in the, in the Wesleyan tradition we have called the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Now, John Wesley uh, was our founder of the Bethanist movement. He, he, uh, he, he spoke of, of different approaches to what, like, for instance, how we would, how we would see Scripture and how we'd understand things. So without doing too much math, because I know it's a holiday, we don't need to do too much of our math, but I want to go into back what, what a quadrilateral is. Because you remember quadrilateral has how many sides? Four, thank you. We got <laughs> four sides. But they're, are they all equal sides? Not necessarily. The four sides of a quadrilateral. We got some math people here. It's gonna, the quadrilateral can be four very different sides. Well, we believe something that and John Wesley helped teach us this that there's a sense of a quadrilateral of our approach to, to looking at Scripture and understanding our faith. And we've kind of nicknamed that the Wesleyan quadrilateral. The most important thing, of course, is Scripture. God's Word. So let's show that next slide. The most important thing is, is Scripture, God's, God's Word. And you see that's the base, the foundation that you see there of the quadrilateral. And Scripture, it, that, that's all Scripture is inspired by God. All Scripture is useful for teaching, for educating, for rebuking, for sharing, and for understanding God more. So we see Scripture as foundational. Then you see over to the other side, you see tradition. The tradition of the church, how we've seen something, what we've done as, as a body of believers. Traditions that we have are very important. You may have family traditions. We have church traditions. We restate our faith every, every Sunday. These are traditions. The top is reason. The Wesleyan tradition is known for using reason. You can look at the Bible and you can also see different parts of the Bible and try to understand different types of genres of literature and how it all connects and understand also to use reason for the times things were written and how things apply to us and, and how things work together. So the application of reason is important. But the one I want to talk about today is the E word. Because I believe it's, the, it's, it's, it's equally, it's not equal, but it's, it's very much an important part of our overall thing. And that is your experience. Your experience with God is important. Your experience with God is a story that needs to be told. So whether it's at the dinner table today, or whether it's at the coffee shop tomorrow, or whether it's around the break room at your work or at the lunch room at your school, find opportunities that you can share with others who this Jesus is, what's been going on in your life to share your personal experience with God. There's a book we've been using, and it's, it's one by uh, a, a pastor named Lillian Daniel. It's called Telling It Like It Is. Maybe that's the most important thing we need you to do is talk about your faith by telling it like it is. Don't say the way Pastor Pete would say it or the way the other Pastor Pete would say it or anything like that. You know, talk about your faith from how you would experience it, how you've experienced this God of the resurrection in your own life and what's made a difference there. And this book we've been reading called Tell It Like It Is is um, Lillian Daniel writes that when we share, something happens. She says, we welcome one another into the spiritual households of our hearts. You're welcoming them into the spiritual household of your heart when you're willing to talk about Jesus in your life. 
the spiritual household of your heart. You know, a few verses after today's passage, we had Matthew 28, the end of Matthew 28, which we call the Great Commission. We've, had, we've called this, it's, it's Jesus, you know this, it says, go and make disciples of Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. What is that all about? But normalizing, normalizing talking in your daily life about what God's up to in your life. The angel of Matthew told those women the good news. He says, I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Well, he's not here. He is risen. He's been raised from the dead. Come and see. Then go. Go and tell. Come and see. Go and tell about my Savior, your Savior, our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to have a hymn of witness, Thine Be the Glory, number 308. Please stand, y'all. so much for being here today. We're going to go outside for any of those that want to take a picture by the cross with your family or anything like that. We'd love to have you you do that. You can borrow my selfie stick if you want to. I've got that right here. So, but, but it's great to see you all here. I just want to give you each a big hug and appreciate you being part of this. What a blessing to have, uh, to have Zayden baptized. Do you all want to bring him down to the front here? Why don't you all do that? Uh, Alex, why don't you bring Zayden down here and your family comes down here. Maybe get some pictures down here and then outside. Zayden, come on down with your daddy. Let's go ahead and get you, get you in here. So you guys want to come by and say hi to Zayden and, and uh, Alex and, and, um, and Erica, Aspen and Avery, the grandparents. We're delighted to have those up from Houston too. Hear this word of benediction. 
Hear the words of the angel. Come and see. Go and tell. Your Savior is risen. To thine be the glory.